Yo, okay. So today, guys, it's going to be a video that's very important. We're going to be talking about excessive flooding, rainfall, in Northeast, where I am in North for Vermont. And we're also going to be talking about stream heat in the South, global temperatures, like mentioning the hurricane season a little bit as well. The Atlantic hurricane season. We'll mention a little bit of the Eastern Pacific hurricane season as well. But, yeah, we'll get to it. Just got to make sure I get all my apps here, and it should be fine. But let's start off with, I don't know, the weather in the Northeast. So I'll use the satellite imagery from Tropical Tibbets. So we have a large and slow moving, large, yeah, a large and slow moving area of thunderstorms over the northeast U.S. It's covering almost all of it. The raining is very heavy. Is very heavy. It hasn't been moving too fast at all over the past few over the past few hours. Some there's some thunderstorms in the Caribbean, Central America, and some in the East Pacific. I think some of these are related to tropical systems. To so invest that might develop in the tropical systems later on. But the main story is basically just the rain. So, as far from this short range forecast discussion, it says that heavy rain is likely to produce produce potential for significant flash flooding through parts of the Northeast and New England tomorrow, which is Monday. And you'll have a frontal system that's going to combine with the amount of moisture in the air to basically dump out the rain. So there's a large moderate section and I believe this was updated earlier to have a high risk. I'll put that up on screen now because not everything I can do is in within like the time limit. Well, there's no time limit, but I don't have like a graphic for everything. So I have to put stuff on the screen for you guys. And hot weather is going to continue in the south. So I'll look at for the GFS. This does show the heavy rain accurately for now. The, a lot of heavy rain is central to eastern PA. There's been a good a lot a good amount of videos coming out of there showing not not dev, not like catastrophic flooding, but decent but decent flooding in a large in a large amount of areas. In Vermont, the flooding the flooding will be is a, is going to be uh, in a high risk. So I believe they say it was analogous to. 20 to Irene, which means it will be have it will, it, the sub looks similar to it, except that you don't have tropical system coming up, so that can be that will be catastrophic because that was one of the worst disasters I believe Vermont had in its history. But even if it's not the same thing, I was still prepared, I was still prepared because a lot of rain's coming. GFS. The rain stays in there in Vermont. It stays there for a little for a good amount of time, and then it clears out. If I look at precip on this end, a little accumulated. On this on the GFS model here, going out to Wednesday, that's already about four, th two to five inches of rain in Vermont itself. But keep in mind, this area is also mountainous, so if you get any thunderstorm that sits over you for a long time, or you get the wind to line up a certain in a certain way, you can get a lot more rain out of this, trust me. And if you get the wrong setup, like a thunderstorm sits, let's say you live here, thunderstorm sits up right on top of you, and there's a mountain, and the wind keeps pushing into the mountains, you're gonna have continuous heavy rain. So it really depends, because the mount because this area is mountainous. So any wind that does come across the mountains because it's wind because the air around here is heavily saturated, it's gonna produce a lot of rain. And it and the Rainstorms are going to be are not going to be moving too fast either. But because they are not going to be moving too fast, they're going to be able to dump a large amount of rain over the same area. I believe using the HRR, the high resolution rapid refresh model, we can see better. It's for only the next 18 hours. But even so, you can see like even a long island, there's like one example where the Rainfall rates are get, or rainfall is getting up to like six inches. In this like isolated area, but anywhere up in here, when with this with the heavy rainfall, you can easily see a lot of rain. Anywhere within this two inches of rainfall, you can see a lot of rain if you get the wrong setup of storms that pop over you. 
this is what I'm talking. This is what they're talking about. Like in some places in Northern Vermont, which I believe the high high school extends like here. I need to use the pen tool, but I need to update it. So it sounds like around here, this area is seeing around eight, nine, or ten or higher inches in this area. So flooding could be extreme, especially since it's mountainous. So yeah, I'd definitely be watching out for that. Farmer south in New Jersey, the rain isn't too heavy in the in the eastern part. In the western part, it's more heavy. It's also a good amount of rain in Connecticut, western Connecticut, Massachusetts, all of Vermont, western New Hampshire could see some flooding, see some flooding as well. Don't know if it would be catastrophic, but any rain, any flooding is catastrophic to a person who endures it. And that rain continues. So, let's try and see when the storms get there. Now, this is the amount of heavy rain that's going on now. There is a slight risk of severe weather down south in North Carolina. I believe for wind, I believe for wind, a little bit of hail and tornadoes. Not too many tornadoes down here. I think it's mostly due to wind. I have to check that. Storms move through the New York City area at 1Z, which I believe if I translate that, I think that's... It's 4. Okay, the, it's minus 4 now. So it will be, I believe that's 10 p.m. Around 10 p.m. storms come through in New York City. They pass through. And in Vermont, they start building in, in the middle of the night. And they keep, and the rain keeps coming northward. and keeps training over the area. Even into Tuesday, it keeps training in. And then around the end of Tuesday, towards the evening, it starts clearing out. But you'll still have some isolated showers around. But the heaviest rain looks to be tonight into tomorrow morning. And then you'll have consistent heavy rain throughout the day. And then another batch of it to late early Tuesday morning. And that lasts until the late afternoon and midnight pushes out. So that gives you your rainfall totals that are that are just high. Now again, now again, depending on where the band set up, because this isn't going to be exactly it will change. Depending on where these heavy rain spots set up or how how fast or slow they're moving, you can see a lot more rain. But just keep in mind, because there's definitely training. I rewind it. There's definitely rain going over the same areas in parts of Vermont. So just because it says you might get six, might get um five inches, it's easy you can easily see ten if you get the if you get the wrong setup. That's something I would keep in mind for you guys. I wish I could look at I could look at dew point. Now the dew point is high, so there's a lot of water that can be taken out of the atmosphere up here. It will also feel very uncomfortable because of that. And that humidity still sticks around. It does lessen towards the end of the week, but it sticks around for a decent amount of time. If I use the GFS, I can see the P-Watt anomalies, I believe. Where's the P-Watt? It should be here. I don't think... It's not on this graphic, but it should be here. If I look at the the global, the whole United States, it should be there. Yeah. Pew water anomaly. So yeah, there's a lot of humidity in the atmosphere, and a lot of rain that can be squeezed out in terms of inches of rain. And that stays in there until about, even Wednesday is still there, but you're not getting as much rain. And then the rain towards the end of the week returns as... You get more troughing. It just lines up and keeps it, and keeps a, keeps you get more of a trough here that stays and keeps making little pressure systems that keep pulling up the moisture. But this is pretty far out, so it's not as reliable. But that pattern is still there, so you can see more of that in the future. Also, in the west, you can see our ridge is building over there. I think, especially if I were to look at um. MSLP, I believe. Yeah. In the west, we have our second story, which is going to be the extreme heat. Now, on this map, excessive heat warnings in the west, southwest, southeastern California, and in southwest Arizona. It fix heat advisories in Texas and in South Florida. South Florida, I believe this heat advisory is for heat indexes of around 110. 
105 to 110 in South Florida. Texas is 110 to 115. No, 105 to 110. And over in the West, it's 110 to 115 or higher. And there's also more of it in... This isn't... No, this isn't excessive heat. This is red flag warnings in eastern Washington state. So fire. So fire. So fire that's definitely going to be very, going to be a concern, as well as in southern Nevada and northern Arizona. So let's continue talking about that. We'll look at excessive heat warnings specifically. So dangerous hot hot afternoons with little overnight relief, so result in moderate to major risk of heat related illness. So if you guys don't know, if it's too hot when you're sleeping at night, your body's unable to cool. Your body's not is not able to cool down. It's not able to heal itself to rest. So you're staying up all night, and any and you're very likely to get stuff like heat stroke and stuff like that. So heat stroke and heat related illnesses are more during the day, but since you're not getting relief at at night, those weak, those illnesses during the day are worsened because of it, because you weren't able to get a proper night sleep. So you need air conditioning in this type of weather. So where in Arizona, I can show you guys on the map. When from 10 a.m. Tuesday to 8 p.m. Sunday, so this is going to be a prolonged heat wave in this area. So you guys to stay inside, drink plenty of fluid, stay in air conditioned room. Those are very important for you guys to do. And this continues to go down, basically sim, basically similar, similar things. Recognize signs of heat, symptoms of heat related illness. Signs include thirst, muscle cramps. So you guys need me to make sure you guys drink a lot of water. If you guys have any symptoms of heat, of heat related illnesses, make sure that you at least try to get to a cooling center or a doctor. Get get to cool get to a cooler shelter. Anything anything that can help that can help. That can help subdue your symptoms and help you not not struggle. No, through this heat, you have to do anything you can to not struggle through it. So I'll continue to use tropical tippets, the tropical tippets website for this. So we'll use temperatures instead, and we're gonna look at what's temperatures. This is it. The temperatures, and we're gonna look at Western United States. So we're going to be looking for up to the next week. We're not going to be looking too far out. I'll use the euro as well and the other models. So right now, there's heat in the south, heat in, heat in the southeast, heat in Florida, and decent amount of heat in Texas. I don't think it's a, it was as hot as earlier, but... This this type of weather is still dangerous, no matter if it's not record breaking or not. You are under heat advisory for heat indexes from the humidity anyway, so I still take precautions outside, or just if you have to go outside. But I would just recommend staying indoors anyway because if you stay indoors, you don't have to deal with the heat heat as long as you have air conditioning over stuff like that. These cool areas are from thunderstorms. If I look on the map, it's cool air. Well, this cool area was from a thunderstorm. Well, if I move out, yeah. The cool areas that you see on the map were from, are usually from thunderstorms. Don't know what was happening there. It should be here, right? Yeah, these cool areas are usually from thunderstorms. <laughs> this in the northeast is from the heavy rain. So going to tomorrow, there's more. Thunderstorms that fire in the north, in the north, in northern plains. I think some some of them will be severe. If I check the um severe prediction, some of them will be severe. You have some storms popping up in Texas. The heat is still very high, 104 in south central Texas near the near the Texas Mexican border. You have 104 around San Antonio, 93 in Dallas. I think this is. Just because it's starting to cool, or you had a rain when that came through, but I'm not certain because this temperatures do do cool off as you move north and east from hot, from very hot to warm to hot. You should have this heat in most of Texas. It dissipates a little bit in New Mexico 
gets hotter again in Arizona. And in Central Valley, California, you're seeing more of those 90s, approaching 100 in Southern Valley. And throughout most of the plains, 90s, the, in, the west, 90s, eastern Washington, 90s. So if you have any fires that do spark over there, they will have an easier time because it's going to be warmer. Overnight lows, it doesn't cool down in these places. Southern Florida stays in the 80s, so you're going to need AC or some way to cool down for you to be able to sleep com comfortably. In Texas and Southern Louisiana, the Gulf Coast, looking at 70s, okay, upper 70s to 80s at night. And in Arizona and Southeastern California, as well as Southern Nevada, you're looking at 80s to even possibly 90 degrees at night. And the Central Valley should cool down at night to at least the 60s, but we'll warm back up during the day, and you'll you'll see 100s in the Central Valley. So you'll have a cooler night, but it will warm up pretty fast. If I look at the east, it's still warm in the east. You still have those hot heat indexes in the south. Hot, the high heat in the south. In your and heat index won't make this any better. Any better. Almost 100 degrees in South Florida. With the heat indexes, that will make it feel like 105 to 110 or higher, depending on where you are. If you're in the sun, just increase those temperatures by 10 or 15. And you'll find the temperature you'll be working in if you're doing stuff outside in the sun. Same thing in Texas. High heat. High heat, 100. Widespread upper 90s. Hundreds are hundreds are possible in southern southeastern Texas, even into western Texas. As it warms up a little bit higher in central Texas, it warms up to 106, 106. I believe it's also a moist heat. If I check the dew point, it should be a moist heat. Yeah, so it's a moist heat in east Texas, but in central Texas, it's not as humid. But it will still feel very hot. So I'd still be cautious of that. Hot in the West, 109 in 109 Arizona. If we zoom, if I zoom in, it's in the West. Where's the West? Western US. 103, 107 around Southeast California. Maybe 110 in Death Valley around here. 103. Hundreds in the, you know, in the Central Valley. This continues. Along the coast, is cooler because of the influence of the Pacific Ocean. In the north, west, it hasn't gotten that warm yet, except in eastern Washington. The heat expands. Expands into the plains, the high heat, into 100s for most of Kansas. Or for most of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, and western Missouri. Arkansas is not as warm, but it's still it was very humid, so it will feel like the hundreds anyway. So so as Louisiana, you do have a thunderstorm complex here that's pushing this, pushing the heat out. So this will probably be severe. As it's feeling also some very hot, some very hot air. So I have 100, 111, 114s in the desert southwest, closer to the Colorado River Valley basin, in the Central Valley, California, is still very hot. The northwest, not as hot. The, north, the far northern plains in northern Minnesota is pretty cool for summer standards. It's in, the 60s and, it's in the 60s and lower 70s, so that should be pretty pleasant. The marine layer is still present along the coast of... The, along the west coast. I believe it is becoming less refined, though. If I look at the winds, the 10-meter wind... The 10 meter wind is still pushing onshore for the most part. But as you guys go later into the week, it looks to get stronger. But as you guys go later into the week, it should still get hotter. But if you live along the coast directly, you should still get the cooling effects, but not as strong as you normally will get it. So this will keep it cool along the coast. But just a little bit inland will still be it will be very hot. So just keep that in mind. And yeah, this pattern keeps going on. You still get you get 110s even in the Central Valley. 
five days out. This is on July 14th. Today's the 9th. I believe this will be Friday. No, this will be Thursday. Or Friday. And then the heat even expands even further. And now you're getting 116 to 114 in the Central Valley of California. You're getting that type of heat. You're getting 100 in Eastern Washington. You're getting you're getting them in in Western or Western Oregon and Washington. So the extreme heat's still building. It's building farther north as the ridge takes hold. Builds in again for a second day, and that pattern starts keeps going. But towards after around 10 days, but that's not too accurate. It starts to wane after the seven day mark, but we'll see what happens. And the mountains is still cool, but this high heat, high heat that you guys are dealing with in the West, you guys are, should be preparing for a prolonged heat wave. A prolonged heat wave is going to be very hot, especially if you live in the Central Valley, Arizona. And eventually, later into the week, if you live in the Pacific Northwest, if you got, I know you got not too many people up there have AC, but that heat's really going to be getting to you guys. So I want you guys to be safe from that. So you guys need to be prepared for that heat. I think I can use this. So for 500 height millibars, a ridge does build over your area. That's why it's so hot. Because early on in the run, you had a trough that was coming through. But once that pushes out, then the ridge builds. And that's really what's going to get in your temperatures to build up higher. As, as the ridge is suppressing the air at the surface. So the air at the surface can't go up. So it gets hotter as a result. And you have this trough. On the east, on the east of Rockies, that's amplifying this ridge, and what's bringing the constant rainfall to the eastern United States, that can be heavy at times and can give us more of those flooding issues. Now some other things I want to talk about: the drought in the Midwest looks like it seems to be improved. It might improve over the rest of the summer into September, according to the Climate Prediction Center. In Texas, the drought is expected to develop and worsen persist and worsen due to extreme heat. There's not too much. There's some rain that's falling down there, but not too much. Not enough to really <clears throat> make a dent in the drought. In the Northeast, the drought should be going, should be either disappearing or should be either disappearing or improving. This is mainly from the heavy rainfall that's falling from the constant storms. The more this goes on, though, the more of an issue this becomes. Is when you're going to start getting flooding and flooding, and flooding is not good as sat soils are already saturated in this in this region. So the more rain that does fall due to the pattern that's happening right now, the less rain water the soil can actually hold. So flooding is going to be more common if it keeps raining like this. If it continues to rain, for the six to ten day outlook, hot in the west, cool ish in the western. In the northern plains and the western Midwest, and then warmer to go up the east coast, but really warmer in the south and, in, and especially in Florida, and wetter in the eastern United States, but far below average in the western United States and below average in southern Texas. And the reasons below average in the western United States is because this ridge that was building over. That's building over. That's building over this area. If I can go back, the ridge building over the western United States here is producing a flow that's going like this. So it's going from Washington down, and that's preventing monsoonal moisture from actually getting pulled up into the south central, not south central, the Four Corners region and the desert. So that's preventing you guys from getting the rain that you guys need that's for your upcoming monsoon. For monthly precipitation outlooks, it looks to be that the East United States, North, Midwest, and the Northeast U.S. will be warmer, and the East Coast and South Texas especially will be warmer, and the North Northwest as well, and a little bit of a cool pocket around Wyoming, West, around Wyoming, Southern Montana, like Western, and the Western Northern Plains. I won't look at the three-month outlook, really, but that's the main gist of it. Warm pretty much everywhere in the country, except for in the north central for the next three months. Precipitation-wise, more rain in the plains. 
for the next week. Well, not the next week. I think this is the next two weeks after this. There's a, a there's a very large area of excessive heat through most of the southern United States, especially in South Florida for the 15th to the 18th. The southern United States, slight risk for excessive heat. It will still be hot. Even, it doesn't matter if it's a slight risk. It's still hot. Moderate in north central Florida. Excessive in Arizona, New Mexico, and western Texas. And there's a large moderate area that's going through California. That covers California, goes to Texas, and covers a large part of the desert of the United States. So this is going to keep it hot. This weather isn't really going away anytime soon. This trough is going to persist over in the north, north, northern U.S. and it's going to keep the eastern part of the country wet, while the southern part of the country keeps being underneath a ridge, and they won't be getting too much rainfall in the west and in the south. They might get some rainfall, but the cold, but there's not any cold air that's coming down to really push out the heat. As it's July now, and that's not something that usually happens. If you really want the heat to go away in the south, you're going to need a lot of rain to do that. I mean, a lot of rain and rain, a lot of rain consistently throughout the day. Like a like a cutoff low, an upper level low that keeps it rainy in the south will keep will make it cool, like we had in June. But it won't keep it. It won't make it cold, but it will keep it cool. So you won't be dealing with the extreme heat, but you'll still be feeling hot with the humidity. Global tropics. We're looking for something. The is looking for something to develop in the west. In the Western Pacific and the Philippines, nothing much in the Atlantic. Wetter, looks to be wetter in the Western Pacific, even into the last part of July. What the West African monsoon still still wet, still going to be warm in in southern United States, and some potential tropical development in the north, in the North Pacific, the Northeast Pacific, around Mexico. For now, for now at least. Now, speaking of like her tropical development, we're gonna be looking at. I'm gonna look at this map and show you guys where to, where we are globally with temperatures. Post that there, and I'll post this graph here. So, for Neo three point four. Near 3.4 region. It's around 1 degree Celsius above normal. Yeah, it's around 1, 1 degree Celsius above normal. It's around a moderate El Nino. But at the same time, we have a warm Atlantic. Although, this is, the, this is not the anomalies chart. This is the anomalies chart. These are the actual temperatures. But the anomalies chart, you have a warm... The El Nino that's coming on gradually, not trifling very fast. I do believe the SOI index is beginning to increase. It's beginning to increase. That picture should be on screen now. But as well as the Western Pacific is warm. So a lot of warm water from the La Nina over the three years is still in the Western Pacific. Indian Ocean, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Us. South central part of it is warm, but the Arabian Sea and the water just off Australia is not warm. It's colder than normal. So I have colder water off the United States West Coast and into off the coast of Baja, California, stretching around south of Hawaii. So any tropical cyclone that does get going off the coast of Central America or Mexico, if it gets far enough west, it's going to get it's going to start weakening a lot because of the cold water that's present here. So although it's warmer than average where they begin to develop, if they move too far out, they're going to disintegrate because there's not enough energy for them. And across the Atlantic, almost all of it, even in Europe over here, it's all warm or above average. And the Eastern Canary Curtain is very warm. Gulf of Mexico has warmed up considerably. Warmed up considerably. East Coast as well. Used to be cold anomalies here, not as much anymore. The cutoff low is gone now, so that's allowed. The, the winds are slacking and it's been warming up pretty fast. So in the actual temperatures, it's in the nine is it around is in the up it's in the mid mid to upper eighties in the Gulf 
in around Florida, in the Bahamas. Some areas are pushing 90s. Western Pacific, similar look across most of it. So if there was a tropical cyclone that get developing here, have a large area of warm water to get to get through. So a storm that was is predicted to form in this area will have plenty of energy to work with. The only issue will probably be its environment. Indian Ocean, warm, warm. Western part of it, getting getting cool. The Red Sea and Arabian, the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf are warm, are hot as usual for this time of year. Mediterranean Sea is starting to warm up into the 26 Celsius line, which is around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And that 80 degrees Fahrenheit line in the Atlantic and the Pacific is pretty far north. Not not everywhere, but it's pretty far north. Believe in the Pacific, this is 40 degrees north is around here. But look, yeah. So the 40 degree north line, the 26 degrees Celsius line is all right, it's touching Japan now. And it should later on move up further. In the Atlantic, it's around the height of Delaware, but it hasn't extended to Delaware because it's cold water closer to coastline. So this will, so if the Atlantic keeps its lackluster trades and it doesn't have screaming trades that are coming through here, this will keep warming up. And by, and we'll really see what it does when we start getting favorable conditions over here for tropical cyclone development. And when that does happen, then we'll see what happens. And we'll see what happens because the El Nino is still coming. We don't know how strong its effects will be over the Atlantic yet because we haven't seen this pattern. And we have to know where the storms are going overall. We have to know where the storms are going to be going first before we can do anything else. I'm just trying to find a National Hurricane Center here. I'm going to be honest. I can't find everything I need, unfortunately, guys. I mean, I am a very slow person. I am sorry. Should be like site map or something, but hey, I'll find it out. I'll figure it out eventually. Okay, there it is. Not National Hurricane Center. There it is. Okay, now let's look at the Eastern Pacific. We have a 60-60% chance of development in south of Baja, California. This is in nearing this area of cold water that I was talking about earlier. So if this storm does move this way, move this way, it has to get its act together now. So once it moves too far out west, it's not going to be able to develop in cool waters. And there's a disturbance south of Mexico that is expected to move westward, continuing to strengthen. It has an 80% chance of development over the next seven, seven, seven days, only 20% in the next 48 hours. So we'll take a look at that right now in the forecast models we use a look at the eastern pacific using a gfs so this system first system doesn't get too organized the second system does seem to organize underneath the gfs but it doesn't seem to get too strong it turned out, it turned out to be a tropical storm and there's more storms afterward but that's far out so this storm gets organized and becomes a tropical storm as it hits that cold water wall that's around here, it begins to weaken rapidly because because it cannot support itself. So we'll look at not just CFS, we'll look at the Euro as well. EMCMWF. This model, look at both. The first system doesn't seem to develop on this model. The second system's also tropical storm, doesn't get too strong. But it's still a name storm, so marine interests will no matter even if this is named or not, this will still have enough influence to be Something to be notable and to avoid at, at sea. And in general, after this, it doesn't seem to be much more. So that's pretty far out, but there's more rainfall coming or storms or convection that's firing off Central America in the Eastern Pacific. But there doesn't seem to be much more that's popping out in these areas after these two storms seem to form. I look at the H wharf just for fun. It doesn't seem to do do much in this 93E. So not much the systems in the eastern Pacific. They don't they don't seem to be very strong. Even if they're not very strong, still best to avoid them because enough even like 
weak storms, quotation marks, can still be deadly. So be deadly if you move into them. So, so stick, stay clear away from them if possible. But overall, they don't seem to be a threat to land, but they could be. But they would be a threat to shipping interest if you are going to be out there. Now, let's talk about the hurricane season forecast. Because, yes. Now, we have warm waters in the Atlantic. So, we're going to be looking at the forecast. So, this is their up Colorado State University's updated forecast for 2023. Just, but this also includes tro tro Tropical Storm that formed in January. I believe this formed January 6th. No, not 6th. This one formed... It formed early in January. I don't remember what date. I think it was like mid, early to mid January. The unnamed tropical subtropical storm formed, and our storm to Arlene, which was in the Gulf, Brett and Cindy, which were in main development region. Brett went into the Windward Islands, and Cindy went north. So our update. So the updated forecast is eighteen named storms, ninety named storm days, nine hurricanes. Four majors, and four majors is one more than the average. But four, but one more major can still do a lot more damage. The ace west of sixty west, which is important because sixty west is the line where where the majority of people in the Atlantic that are affected by hurricanes and tropical cyclones live. The most of the land is west of that. Most of the land is west of that area. So, from the Caribbean islands, westward, the United States, Mexico, Mexico, Central American countries of Honduras, Nicaragua, El Salvador, excuse me, El Salvador, Guatemala, Panama, Costa Rica. Although they don't get affected by tropical cyclones too much, it's more than northern neighbors do. Jamaica, Cayman Islands, Cuba, Turks, Caicos, Bahamas. A lot of the islands in the land that's concerned with hurricane impacts is west of that area. Even Nova Scotia and um, Newfoundland and Canada are west of it, or west of the line. So they can still get affected by a hurricane that moves, coming out of the Caribbean or out of the United States. Well, not out of the United States. The remnants out of the United States, but usually they pass by Bermuda and then they get picked up and hit Nova Scotia and Newfoundland, Canada. Ace is 160, so this is about a hyperactive season, I believe. I believe 123 is above average, and 160 is hyperactive. This is a bare minimum hyperactive season, but it only takes one storm to make someone's life really bad. Someone's life change forever. Not just really bad, change forever. In the top, even a tropical storm can make your life, can make, can change your life permanently. This is the updated forecast. Now, some factors, we have El Nino going on, so that's going to impart wind shear over the Caribbean. However, the very warm Atlantic might counteract some of that. El Nino is the main reason why why the forecast is not as, as high as it could have been. I can look at the more in-depth report for as well, but I'm not going to do that just to save time. Yeah, 16th of January. I'm going to do that just to save time. But in general, the main issue with this season is how much will El Nino affect the Atlantic? Basically. Because of the because of El Nino's effects don't come out, but aren't as strong, or don't reach the Atlantic in time for peak season. But the Atlantic can have a very busy season. But if they do reach in time, the numbers will be more aligned with the lower stuff. Eastern Pacific would you normally be enhanced by the El Nino, but I'm unsure because the cold water is near Baja California that could that's going to stop. Storms are getting too strong and lasting too long. The West Pacific seems to be in its better in a better position since almost all of its warm convection is over there. Stuff just has to get going over there. Stuff to really start happening. But that seems to be the best basin for activity this year. At least looking at it from a warm water perspective. 
convection perspective since we have El Nino that's pushing because then we have El Nino although the convection is pushed west and there's still a lot of warm water left in the West Pacific so effects of El Nino don't seem to be as marked marked over there with cooler water due to it not being pushed there but we have to really wait and see we don't know all right guys that was my video I hope you guys enjoyed it well, not enjoyed it, but you guys learned something from it. I'll try to make these more informative in the future. I don't have the best tools, but I try to make it as informative as possible with how I speak. So, so I hope you guys learned something. All right, I'll see you guys in another video. I'll try to make an update to this whenever I can. And yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow.